human. You imagine these people. The antediluvian people were a mighty people. Are you kidding me? We are just wimps compared to these people. We're nothing. We are just... You know, you know what was lost during that flood? Do you, can you imagine the, the majestic trees and the, just animals and creatures that were taken away? Things that we can't, we, we've never seen, we know nothing about. You know, you stop and think about the Jews when they were, when they were brought back in and they, they built the new temple. And they just, oh, look at the beautiful temple. And the old people that saw the temple before found them. They thought, oh, are you kidding me? This is not a temple. But they thought, this is the best they ever saw. This is the same way with our trees and everything today. We think we got something great. It's nothing. Yeah. We're dwarfs. And we are. Yet while through fear of punishment, they acknowledge their sin. Through fear of punishment. Stop and think about that. Through fear of punishment, they acknowledge their sin. What's the difference between Peter and and Judas, could it be this? They felt no true contrition, no abhorrence of evil. They would have returned to their defiance of heaven had the judgment been removed. That's just horrible. So when God's judgments shall fall upon the earth before it's deluge by fire, the impenitent will know just where and what their sin is, the dispensing of his holy law. Despising, sorry. The despising of his holy law. Yet they will have no more true repentance than did old world sinners. Some in their desperation endeavored to break into the ark, but the firm made structure withstood their efforts. Some clung to the ark until they were borne away by the surging waters or their hold was broken by collision with rocks and trees. The massive ark trembled in every fiber as it was beaten by the merciless winds and flung from billow to billow. The cries of the beasts within expressed their fear and pain, but amid the warring elements it continued to ride safely. Angels that excel in strength were commissioned so even the ark itself, as wonderfully as that was made, as, as, as God told Noah to build it, it would not have survived if there wouldn't have been angels that excel in strength to protect the ark. Amen. Brothers and sisters, what I'm trying to tell you here today is the only place of safety is in the ark. Amen. And the ark is in the most holy place. That's present truth, brothers and sisters. That's where Jesus is. Where Jesus is, is always present truth. Amen. Okay? There may be truth, but present truth is where it's at. Never forget that. This church, us, Seventh-day Adventists, have a present truth message. It's not the same as all the rest. We are different. We have a mission. To finish this work. Amen. We are the workers of the end time. And we are asleep. Brothers and sisters, I hate to say it, we're, we're asleep. You know, I had some friends that went to the, the conventions in San Antonio. And I was, I was invited to come to the conventions in San Antonio. But I opted to go to Michigan and hurt my back and break a tooth. And have a great time with some friends up there, Marty and Deborah. But anyways... My friends told me, you know, it was a great experience and they really enjoyed it. But you know, they said, when you just look at the Adventists, you, you, you really couldn't tell that there's any difference in them and anybody else. Really. There's no difference. Them and the world. Just to look at them. I mean, not, not just to hear them talk. Because I, I hope and pray that there's different language to that Adventist speech. But... That, that, that really got me to thinking. There's no difference. What do you think about that? I don't think it's very good. I don't think it's very good. We should look different. We should talk different. We're not like the world. You know, there's, there's many that want to win the world with the world's ways. That doesn't work. What are you offering? You're offering something I already have? What good is that? 
You have to have an awful good salesman to sell me something I already got. You know? Anyways, let's turn to Galatians. Galatians chapter 6. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap everlasting life. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. As we have, therefore, opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. Amen. Isn't that really pretty simple to understand? You know? Um, people find what they're looking for. I, I know it's a pretty simple statement, but it's really revolutionary when you when you really stop and wrap your mind around it. Because what are you looking for? I mean, what are you diligently looking for? You think about these parents. This just breaks my heart. These these parents of these these two 14-year-old boys that just disappeared. Oh can you imagine the heartbreak, the heartache? How do you think their prayers are? You think they're diligent? I believe so. I believe so. I, I just can't even imagine, you know, in this, the first thought I had thought, and I haven't heard anybody say this, but, you know, these, I'm sure people, well, they're too young, whatever, you know, 14 years old, in my opinion, they're not too young. If they're going out and they're doing their thing, but if they were going to the Bahamas, yeah, okay, I get that, they're too young. I don't even know if you guys realize how, how prevalent human trafficking is today. I mean, it's all over the world, even in this country. I mean, it would be nothing for a couple of bad hombres to come on up with two 14-year-old boys and grab them and flip their boat over, and hello, yeah. never seen again, disappeared off the face of the earth, become somebody slave or whatever. Are you kidding me? If this is the world we live in. And nobody's safe. I don't care how tough you think you are. If you're fifth degree black belt in the martial arts and you're Mr. Super Cop or something, you know, somebody comes up behind you with a little flanky with something in it, boom, you're done. And you're finished. So who do we have to rely on but God? If we're walking with God, if we're in tune with God, and we're prayer protected, as I like to call it. You know, you're going to have this little voice that says, you know, Ray, don't go into the office depot. Why? You going to argue with that voice? I've learned to not argue with that voice. Because, you know, it's always cost me money and time and a lot of other things. Yeah, you know, I, I remember, this is a story that probably a couple of you have heard, but I was in Arkansas, this was probably 20 years ago. I'm pumping fuel in my truck, and this voice, I, I swear I heard this voice like it was standing right here. It said, open the hood. I'm like, why? You know, I mean, I just checked the oil before I started this trip. I'm good, you know, and I'm fueling the truck. Now, mind you, there's a cat dealer right across the street. The cat's the engine that I got in my truck. And I'm still feeling, and I heard it again. Lift the hood. Fine, I'll lift the hood. <laughs> you know, I mean, this was, to me, I don't know. I really can't tell you. I mean, it seemed so real to me that it sounded like it was out here. It could have been just in my head. I don't know. But I know it was God. It was the Holy Spirit. Because when I lifted the hood, I had no belts on my truck. All the belts were gone. Everything. Not a one. Not even pieces of a belt. It's like they just evaporated. 
And it must have just happened because it, it seems like I would have noticed something in my gauges, you know. So I just drove right across the street, got new belts, put them all on, and thank you, Jesus, went down the road. Yeah. But what if I didn't? What if I didn't open the door? What if I was defiant still one more time? I mean, God, the second time, where would I have been? Who knows where I would have been? You know? We need to learn to listen. We need to learn to be tender enough to be able to hear His voice. If we're speaking with Him, if we're talking with Him, and we know. And I, I firmly believe that, that God has a purpose for each and every one of our lives. Okay? And if you're going to be in trouble or there's something happening, God will let you know somehow. Even if you're so stubborn that He has to blow a tire to stop you or to slow you down. Or to do whatever. I hope that it doesn't take a brick flying through your windshield to get your attention. You know? We need to be prayed up, people. We need to be praying for one another. You know, if, if you don't like Sister What's her name because for whatever reason, she said this about so and so. Are you kidding me? Let it go. Let it go. Somebody's voice. Oh, I don't like his voice. Hmm. I don't like his toupee. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, people, just get over it. Quit being so superficial. I mean, I can't grow hair up here too good anymore. But man, I got about shaved the potatoes out of my ears every day. I, mean, I look like Mr. Potato Head in the morning. I got hairs coming out my ears this long. I don't know. I don't know what happened. <laughs> All them jeans were supposed to be here. <laughs> they ended up in my ears. <laughs> but we just need to love each other. Really. You know? And stop being so petty and... Because if we're going to be of one mind, brothers and sisters, Amen. we can't be seeing each other's faults. we got to, as Paul says, see one another as better than ourselves. Okay. Look, you know your own heart. You know you're no good. Are you kidding me? They even came to Jesus and said, Who? You're a good man. What did he say? There's only one good. Not that he wasn't good, because he was. But he was still in flesh. That's what he was talking about. It's an amazing God that we, that we serve. That we follow. I mean, that he would do everything that need be done for us to have salvation. Amen. For us to be with Him. Amen. This is so exciting to me to just, to, to just imagine that He loves me so much that He would move heaven and earth for just me. <coughs> for just me. That's how much He loves. I, I want to know what that love is all about because I really don't comprehend it. Because I haven't begun to. As I said before, if you slap me in the face, my first initial reaction is I want to slap you back. That's wrong, brothers and sisters. That's not like Jesus. That's not like Jesus. You know, even women today, a woman cuts another woman off. She follows her to her house to beat her up. <laughs> Women? It's, it's unbelievable. But anyways, I had some more, but we're right at 12.01. And you guys got me up here early today, so I'm just going to go ahead and let it be. All right. Our uh, closing song is 290.
sisters, let us lean on Jesus' promises. We have to remember that, you know, when the Ten Commandments were handed down, the people all said, all that the Lord has said, we will do. That is the right response. But it's the wrong dependence. It's definitely the wrong dependence. We have got to lean on Jesus Christ. We have to take His promises. Whoever makes the promises supplies the righteousness. Never forget that. Jesus made the promises. All the Ten Commandments are, are promises. That's all they are. They're not a list of do's and don'ts. When God says don't steal, He means I'm going to take care of you. It's just that simple. You can work the, all the Ten Commandments out just that easy. That's what it's all about. It's about following the Lord Jesus Christ. And I hope and pray that each and every one of you are prayer protected everywhere you go. Because time is short. The door is closing. And the Lord will lead those that are looking diligently to be led. Try it. It might be a spirit of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that we are able to live in such an exciting time as today. The prophets of old sought to see this time. And I pray that we don't miss the opportunities that we have before us because we're so selfish and self-centered. And that we are so willing to be offended and upset with some fellow that cuts us off instead of praying for the poor soul that's in such a hurry that he can't even know his right hand from his left hand. Lord, I pray for a tenderness for our church. I pray for a tenderness that makes us so that we can see when our brother and sister is hurting. Amen. That even though they're trying to hide something because they're in pain, great pain, about something that we would, through the Holy Spirit, know that there's a problem and that you could bring the remedy through us. I pray that you make us vessels of your honor, tools that you love to hold in your hand, Father, my biggest prayer today is that you would make each and every one of us as we leave here today a blessing to somebody. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.